Warning, this video does contain constant stuttering, so viewer discretion is advised. Before the video starts, I just want to say that subtitles are available, so if I misspell or mispronounce a word, make sure you have subtitles, subtitles on just in case. Also, be sure to follow me on my socials, which will be linked in, this, in the description below. Thanks for listening and enjoy this video. Michael Jackson's final studio album was a labor of love that did, that started production in 1997 and did not finish until eight weeks before the album's release in, in the fall of 2001. Like its previous material, Invincible explores various themes from love and romance to isolation and social issues. The album was recorded in, in 10 different studios and was easily the most expensive album ever made. And while the album was an underrated gem in the MJ community, there hasn't been much discussion about its cover design. Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to the channel. My name is a Horseman and in this week's video we will discuss the history behind the cover art of the Invincible album. Before we begin, be sure to, to subscribe and ring the bell icon so you, will, so you won't miss my latest videos. According to Karen Fay, Michael's makeup artist and hairstylist for several decades, photographer Albert Watson's 1992 photograph, The Golden Boy, was the original inspira inspiration behind the album cover for Invincible. Karen said that she had done Michael's makeup and hair all in gold, similar to Watson's photo. The initial golden incar incarnation of the cover appeared on the earliest 1999 ac acetate of the album. Sony executives, however, decided heavy alterations had to be made, having the final result look more distorted and digitized, digitalized, symbolizing the king of pop entering the modern era of music. The Invisible album, co album cover presents a, an interesting blend of elements coming together to portray the superstar in, the, in a unified manner. It's a departure from the elaborate designs of his previous albums like Dangerous and History and the vibrant imagery of Off the Wall and Thriller. Instead, it delivers a simple yet powerful message of Michael Jackson's inner peace resonating with viewers and fans. Noticing the details of the image reveals subtle cues about, about his creation. A digital layer overlays the right eye and eyebrow, indicating Jackson's awareness of both current and future music trends. Meanwhile, the untouched left eye and eyebrow provides a sense of, of familiarity, reflecting Jackson's timeless appeal to his loyal fan base. The typography of the album, album title, a consistent feature across Jackson's discography, takes a different approach this time. Rather than dominating the cover, the title Michael Jackson stands out, out prominent, prominently, eclipsing the album's name. This deliberate, deliberate choice emphasizes Jackson's persona, positioning him at the front point of the artwork. Perhaps in itself, the image of Jackson's face serves as a masterpiece capturing the essence of his artistry and legacy. Upon the release of Invincible, five different versions of the LP were put out, featuring the cover in various colors, gray, the original, orange, blue, red, and green. It was, a, it was a reference to the portrait of Jackson made by Andy Warhol in 1984. The general idea came from the singer's mind as he reportedly insisted that it would be fun for fans to collect different versions of the album. Additionally, an alternate version of the artwork was also used for promotion purposes, most notably for nope, for the earliest versions of the MichaelJackson.com website. Also, regarding the various covers, Diana Ross' 2006 album, Blue, features artwork resembling the blue cover of Invincible. However, there's no proof Diana, Diana Ross' album cover was inspired by it. Initially, in 1987, Albert Watson was to photograph Michael for the Blood on a Dance Floor album, album cover. However, when he arrived at the studio and prepared, on, and prepared to set, Michael was not feeling well, so the session was postponed indefinitely. Years later, he reached out to him for, a, for the next al album cover and spent two weeks pre preparing for a series of photo sessions. These sessions involved personal portraits of Michael and him dancing, uh, dancing around a pole 
in a suit that he they picked out himself. Additionally, a sketch by Michael's friend Yuri uh, Geller was also included in the album booklet. The sketch was drawn on a napkin at 11 11 p.m. at a hotel in New York. The sketch captures beautiful words and symbols of love, peace, hope, and enlightenment. Invincible would go on to peak at number one in 11 territories worldwide and spawn three singles, You Rock My World, Cry, and Butterflies, with the first, uh, with the first um, peaking at number 10 at the Billboard Hot 100. That's the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you would like to learn more about the process of the Invincible album and what led to the unfortunate flop, click here to view the video essay and be sure and be sure to check out my uh, my other video essays, fan made albums and mixes on, on the channel. Thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next one.